Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Oler's Wallet and in this video, we're going to take a look at the American Express green card, the gold card and platinum card to see which card is going to be best for you. But first, if you're new to this channel, this channel is all about credit cards, credit card rewards and showing how you can use your points and miles to travel for less. So that's something that interests you, consider subscribing and turning the bell notification on as well. Also, consider giving the video a thumbs up, it really does help the channel out. Now, the green card, gold card, and platinum card offer something just a little bit different for customers. I know some of you out there will say, you should just get them all. But there are some people out in the world that don't find enough value in almost $1,000 in annual fees and might just be looking for one, maybe two of these cards. So while you can pick more than one of these or get all three of them, we're going to look at if you just wanted one of these cards for your rotations. And starting with the sign up bonus. Now one of the most frustrating things about American Express is the fact they always seem to have many different offers going on at the same exact time. You have public offers, personal referrals, incognito mode. So it's always important to check what offers are out there because odds are it's going to change the next time you look. With the American Express green card, it's publicly offering 30,000 points after a $2,000 spend, but the best offer is going incognito for 45,000 points after a $2,000 spend in the first 90 days. The gold card is publicly offering a 35,000 point bonus, but don't go for that one. Go incognito and you're going to see a 50,000 point offer after a $4,000 spend in the first 90 days. Then you have the Platinum card, and we all know about the Platinum's 100,000 point offer, but if you're not targeted for that offer, then the next best offer is going to be 70 or even 75,000 points after a $5,000 spend. And really, do not waste your time on the 60,000 point offer if you haven't had this card before. Now, if you can get the 100,000 point offer for the Platinum card, then without a doubt, you should go for it. But that being said, you also need to look at the spending requirement and make sure you can meet a $5,000 spending requirement. And while the Platinum is the best in terms of points, the green card is just about as good as a gold card and only has half the spend requirement. So if you're someone who can't meet a large minimum spend requirement, the green card is actually going to be a pretty good offer for you. The gold card is good at 50,000 points, but the spending requirement is much higher than that of the green card for only 5,000 more points. Now taking a look at the earning rates, and some of these cards have overlapping categories. The green card earns triple points on all travel and dining and then one point per dollar everywhere else. The gold card earns 4x on all dining and US grocery stores up to $25,000, 3x on airfare purchased directly with the airlines or American Express Travel, and then one point per dollar everywhere else. And then the Platinum card earns 5x on airfare booked directly with the airlines or airfare or hotels book through the American Express travel portal, and then just one point per dollar everywhere else. Now, unless you spend a lot of money on airfare, the Platinum card is the worst of the three. The categories are just too narrow, and the bonus multipliers are not going to be good for most people. Now, the gold and the green card, I think, are aimed at different people. The gold card is really going to be best if you buy a lot of groceries and dine out frequently. And the green card is going to be a great option if you're someone who dines out but also has more general travel expenses like subway fares, hotels, tours, and a lot of other options because the travel category is extremely broad and covers more than just airfare. And while I initially thought the green card wasn't worth it when they refreshed this card, as we see other cards increase the annual fees, I think the green card is slowly becoming more appealing. Then looking at the annual fees, the green card comes with a $150 annual fee and that's not waived in the first year. The gold card is just a little bit higher coming in at 250 bucks a year and that's not waived in the first year. Then you have the platinum card which is more than both the green card and gold card combined coming in at 550 bucks. It's also going to cost you $175 for up to three authorized users. Now all of these cards have benefits that could help offset that annual fee which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. But the green card I think here comes out on top since it's the lowest annual fee followed by the gold card, and then last place would be the platinum card. Now talking about foreign transaction fees. Now what's great on paper is the fact that all of these cards have no foreign transaction fees. And while there is information saying that American Express has the same domestic acceptance rate as Visa and MasterCard, it definitely does not compare internationally. But if you don't travel internationally often, then this is great news for you and it really makes American Express cards more appealing for people. 
but I actually want to see hard numbers on this versus just American Express's claim, which is all I've seen and currently I'm going on that information. But let's hope we see American Express keep improving on this because if they keep improving and expanding their terrible international coverage, then American Express could be quite the force. But you know what? Let's give American Express credit for increasing their domestic acceptance rate. Now let's talk redemption options. And all of these cards have the same redemption options. All of them redeem for the same crappy rate through the American Express travel portal, which I really think you'd expect the Platinum card, which is far more expensive than the other two here, to have some sort of extra uplift for their travel portal redemptions. But the real value and membership reward points is their transfer partners. They just have so many partners and there are a lot of great ways to use these points. And if you're unsure how to use them, be sure to check out my award booking demonstration series where I go over how to use points for award redemptions. I'll link the playlist in the description below. Now let's talk other benefits on these cards. The benefits between these cards are quite different. For a card with a $150 annual fee, the green card has a couple of decent benefits. You're going to get $100 clear credit and $100 lounge buddy credit each calendar year. You're also going to get trip delay coverage on round trip tickets and this is good for up to $300 in coverage after being delayed 12 hours or more. The gold card benefits are really geared towards people who like to dine out and travel occasionally. You're going to receive $120 dining credit broken up into 12 10 monthly credits for certain restaurants and even box.com. Then you're going to get $100 airline credit, which this airline credit is a little bit more difficult to use than a travel credit from like the Chase Sapphire Reserve or even the City Prestige. And then when you use the hotel collection and book at least two nights, you're going to get $100 hotel credit. The trip delay coverage is the same as you get on the green card, which is good for up to $300 after being delayed 12 hours or more when you book a round trip ticket. In the Platinum card, well, the Platinum card is all about travel benefits. You're going to get $200 in Uber credits, which are given to you in $15 monthly increments and $20 in December. You're going to get a TSA PreCheck or Global Entry credit, which really you can get with so many cards now. You get a $200 airline credit, which after American Express killed the gift card loophole, it's becoming increasingly more difficult to use this airline credit. And you get plenty of access to lounges, including Priority Pass Access, Centurion Lounge, and even Delta Sky Club. You're going to get gold status with both Marriott and Hilton. But Marriott gold status isn't really worth much anymore, but Hilton gold is very, very solid. You get trip delay coverage that kicks in after being delayed 6 hours or more for up to $500 when you book round trip tickets, which is the same as you get with a car like the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Then you're going to get $100 hotel credit when you book a room at the hotel collections for two nights or more. Then other benefits if you book a hotel that is part of the fine hotel and resorts, you'll also get $100 Saks Fifth Ave credit broken up into two $50 credits. So then it comes down to the question, which of these cards is going to be best for you? And really I think each of these cards are geared towards different people. I know there are plenty of you out there who are going to say, well the Platinum card is obviously the best card. But really, unless you're someone who travels a lot and can make use of all of its allowance style credits, you might not actually be receiving maximum value for this card. And that question I asked where over 50% of the people who answered said they travel just zero to two times a year, I'm not really sure the Platinum card is going to be for you. But if you're someone who's a road warrior or travels frequently and can make use of all the different credits and lounge access, then yeah, I guess it could be worth its $550 annual fee but I don't think this is actually a large number of people. The gold card is going to be the card for you if you're someone who spends a lot of money on groceries and dining, but occasionally on airfare, because it just earns so well for dining and groceries that you can really rack up a ton of points. And if you book airfare, you're still going to earn triple points and even receive some travel protections. Then you have the green card. I think the green card is going to be the card for you if you're an occasional traveler or someone who just travels a few times a year who wants extra benefits to make that travel just a little bit more comfortable for you. But you're also someone who spends more money on dining and general travel expenses. And while you can have more than just one of these cards, if you do that, then you need to make sure you're getting positive value for all of those annual fees. Because while the earning rates are solid on these cards, the annual fees go up real fast when you start adding these cards together. And for myself, while I travel I feel frequently enough, 
to get some value from the Platinum card's benefits, I don't benefit enough for that card to make it worth it for me. I think it's actually the green card I would get the most benefit from if I were to go with one of these cards. The gold card, I just can't justify the annual fee since I can't use all of its benefits. So tell me, which of these cards do you think is the best one? Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in this video. If you want to help support the channel, a simple way would be using links on the website or in the description below. And until next time, safe travels and take care.